Hi there and welcome to another Python video. In this video we're going to consider the zip function which is a top level Python function built into the standard library. And zip allows parallel iteration over multiple iterables which are passed as parameters to the function. So to break that down a little bit and show you an example, we have, imagine we have two lists, A and B. A contains 1, 2 and 3, B contains 4, 5 and 6. Imagine you were interested in iterating over these lists, but you needed to maintain the order. You, need to, you needed to have access to this, the same index, essentially, at each iteration. So imagine you needed 1 and 4 together. Zip gives you a way to do this. You pass it the iterables, and it can have more than 2. It can have any number of iterables. And that returns to you a list containing um, each zipped element essentially so you see that the first element of the zipped list is one and four containing one and four the second has two and five and the third has three and six so zip gives you a way to iterate over sequences and you can do that in parallel and access the elements in parallel so what i want to do is define uh, th define two lists and containing data so I've got people, which has three people, and I've also got three ages here. And what I want to do is um, show you how you would have to do this normally without the zip function. You would have to have a pointer to the index. So for index in the range, the length of people. So that will give us the range from 0 to 2, 0, 1, 2. For it. And what we'd need to do is then we would need to say people at index and let's say ages at index and that would be that would give us the values so we can print that out and we get that's how you, you essentially you would need to keep track of the index and you can then print out Jamie with 22 John with 25 Sally with 31 now that's a way to do that but the use of the index is not convenient if you know you have two lists and you want to operate in parallel over those lists or indeed this can be done with tuples or sets or other sequential structures then you can use the zip function so zip if we just analyze what happens when we pass people and ages to zip we get a zip object which if we convert that to a list we get the structure that we've seen up here where the first element has the zipped values from the first and the second iterable and we get Jamie in 22 so what we can do then with those values is we can say for person we can actually destructure the tuple we get back at each, at each iteration so for person person and age and the zip of people and ages what I can do is then print the person and the age and that's a little bit more readable than the previous method because we don't need to track the index we can assign meaningful variable names to each individual element within each list so that's a way to do that as well and we can actually extend this you know just to show that this works with different structures let's say we had a set of um you know set of numbers just random numbers um and i'm going to say 34 2 and 15. we can actually add that to the zip and we would need to destructure that out to number let's say and we can then print them all out as well. So this doesn't just work with lists, it works with sets. It also works with tuples and other um, sequential structures. So what we want to do now is show some you know, useful use cases for the zip function. So the next step here is I want to show you that you, some of the cool things you can do with zip. It's most frequently used for iterating over sequences, but you can also do some cool things. Now what I'm what I've generated here is a matrix. Um, let's this is a two D matrix. Um, four, two, and three. Four, five, and seven. Now, if I print that matrix out to the console or to the the notebook, you see that it's a two dimensional list. What we can do is we can use the list zip, and we can zip the matrix, each individual element within the matrix, and that will give us back the transpose, which is a pretty cool trick, and that works because we are able to, we, we take a look at each individual list within the matrix by um, using that syntax there. And we can then look over the elements that um, 
that are in the same index in each of those lists, and that gives us 4 and 4 here, 2 and 5, 3 and 7, so that gives us the transpose of the matrix, and I can store that in transpose. And just to verify that that is indeed the transpose, I'm going to show you a few NumPy operations. Import NumPy is MP, and we can generate an array, a NumPy array from our matrix, which gives us this original matrix. And NumPy has this very good syntax for um, looking at the transpose, the dot T syntax. And you can see that what you get back there is similar to what we have. We have 4 and 4, and we have that in the transpose. 2 and 5, 3 and 7. So that's how you use the, the zip function in order to iterate, or rather iterate over two or more sequences in parallel and you can actually use that to transpose a matrix which is a pretty cool trick. Now I've got this note down here, what if one of the iterables that you pass to zip is not the same length? What if they have different lengths? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original lists that I had of people and ages and I'm going to add one more person to that list, Helen. And then if we iterate over that for person and age and zip of people and ages and we print person and age, we see that we don't actually get anything for Helen and that's because the zip will actually terminate when one of the iterables is exhausted, as I've says down here. So the there are three elements in ages, there are four elements in people, that means there are only going to be three results because zip stops when the smallest number has been exhausted. And when we no longer have any more ages, then the zip function is done. If we want to change that behaviour, we can use zip longest, which is defined in the iter tools module. And zip longest is something I'm going to import right now. So from iter tools, import zip longest and what we can then do is iterate, well, I'm going to copy this line exactly and what I can do is replace zip with zip longest and now we do get a value for Helen It's um, we do get the representation of Helen's name but we don't get an age, obviously there is no age so it's represented as none and that might be fine for your use case but zip longest also provides a fill value, which is a keyword argument, and you can provide anything you want in here. So, for example, I might put a question mark because we don't actually know Helen's age, and that fills in the none with a question mark. And if I want to try and be clever, I can maybe put the sum. Let's let's take the average age. So we take the sum of the ages, and we can divide by the length of the ages to get the average, and that will give us 26 from that data. Um, so you can do anything you want with a fill value, but um, zip longest essentially gives you a way to iterate over all the iterables, even and, and basically it won't stop when the smallest has been exhausted. So the key takeaway from this video, I think, um, zip is a very useful function for iterating over lists and other sequences when you want to do it in parallel um, and access data together. That's very important. Um, Zip longest, on the other hand, will give you a, a tool that you can use to iterate over the data and not stop when any of the iterables has been exhausted. It allows you to continue going and you can provide a fill value if you want. So that's all for this video. I'd like to thank you for watching and please subscribe if you enjoyed and see you next time. Bye.